Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. Getting more and more festive. Uh, happy Friday the 13th. So uh, be careful out there. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. I took a kind of step back to my earlier days with technology and did a deep dive into Hyper-V. Obviously, this is the hypervisor that powers not just the Windows Server virtualization, but Azure Local and Azure. So I go through some of the key technologies related to CPU, memory, storage network, even GPU partitioning. So it's kind of cool to understand what its capabilities are and how that relates to, for example, Azure usage. And then a quick video on the new pay-as-you-go option for Windows Server 2025 instances that are not in Azure. So on-premises, in other clouds, it's not saying that's going to be your default by any means, but if you have these really maybe short-term projects or certain burst scenarios, it would be a, a nice way to get Windows Server 2025 license where you don't have data center uh, covering the whole box. So onto what's new, um, Azure Kubernetes service, the enhanced logs has gone GA. So this is for the container logs V2 output, and it's extending the schema um, of that table. So it's adding a Kubernetes metadata column. So it gives me things like pod labels, pod annotations, pod UID, image, image ID, image repo, uh, image tags. So I get more information, which is good for obviously investigations. But it also adds a log level column that will give me detail about the log. Is it critical? Is it a warning, a debug, trace? There's a few other ones in there as well. So it's going to be better context and be able to see more quickly and filter. But also things like Grafana dashboards will actually color code the logs uh, based on that log level. So it gives me some improved sort of visibility and experience there as well. The AKS automated deployment UI has gone GA. So just think about, hey, I'm updating an application. I do my commit to my GitHub repo. We might have to manually go and create the actions and the pipelines to trigger from that. What this UI does is it goes and sets up those GitHub actions and a pipeline to update your AKS environment when I do those commits to my repository. Um, oh, I skipped one. So the AKS vaulted backup has gone GA. So this is simply another tiered option. This is the vault tier. So I get that separate storage of it. I get that geo replication. I can get up to 10 years. Um, actual retention. The AKS false detach, this is now GA as well. So it's for Kubernetes 1.30 and it's an update to the Azure Disk CSI driver. And what this lets me do is imagine I have a zone redundant storage disk and there's a problem with a node in a particular zone. Well, ordinarily, I may get problems trying to reuse the disk, connect it to another host because it thinks it's still attached to another host. So if this false detach, if there is a zonal failure, I can false detach of that zone redundant storage disk and then attach it to another node in a different zone so I can get up and running that much quicker. Um, AKS parallel image pull um, is now the default. So this is for 1.31 and above, it becomes the default. Before that, was it was a serialized pool, so one image at a time with the parallel, as the name suggests, it's, it's parallel pulling the images. So this would mean for very large images, for a large number of images, I'll get a higher performance for the pulling of those images. Uh, the AKS GitHub Copilot for Azure is now in preview. So this is an extension. And what it's basically now doing is when I want to go and talk to the at Azure as part of the GitHub Copilot experience, it now understands AKS and can do various tasks related to AKS. For example, it can help me create my AKS cluster. It can help deploy a manifest to my AKS cluster. It can generate kubectl commands. So that's just a really nice capability when I'm in GitHub Copilot now. Obviously, we have that Azure extension, and now it's AKS aware we can do AKS nice things. If when I'm using um, AKS private ingress, I'm using Nginx, typically what would happen is the Azure load balancer that fronts that would have a public IP address. What I can now do as part of my cluster creation is for Kubernetes 1.30 and above, 
I can actually specify I want to use a private IP address instead. So that's using the Azure CLI, and that's using Bicep. And so obviously that's at creation time, but I can also update it um, for an existing cluster. Um, the AKS Kato extension is available in preview. So that's an AI toolchain operator. It's just available as an AKS VS Code extension. So it, it helps simplify the AI inferencing I may want to perform. And this is a kind of a nice thing now. So when I'm using GPU enabled Windows node pools, obviously I need a driver on the nodes to talk to the GPU. What I can now do is I can pick the specific driver I need, which will be important depending on the type of GPU work I'm doing. So I can use the grid driver, which is where I need virtualization support, or the CUDA driver, where I need more computational task support. So I now get to pick that. Uh, the AKS Communications Manager is in preview. It really just makes it easier to manage the notifications, the maintenance things I'm getting from AKS. And now I can actually restrict access to the instance metadata service. So if I think about the instance metadata service, it's that IP address that I can talk to from an Azure resource to find out information about the Azure resource itself. I can find out things like maintenance that's coming on. Well, if I'm a pod running on an AKS node, I can go and talk to that instance metadata service endpoint and get information. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want those pods being able to go and get that data. So what I can now do is I can restrict the communication to the instance metadata service, that endpoint, to only be for my system and user pods, not customer pods. So that's a nice way to restrict what things can see. And obviously as part of that instance metadata service as well, I can go and get an access token for the managed identity of that AKS resource. So potentially pods could go and get a token I maybe don't want them to go and get. On the storage side, so for storage accounts, the max request per second has been doubled. Uh, so this is for general purpose V2 storage accounts and blob storage accounts. It's up from 20,000 a second to 40,000. Database side, I've talked about this previously, but basically the promotional offer to get discounts for the Azure Databricks serverless compute has been extended now to the end of April, 2025. So I know this was for the notebooks, the jobs, the pipelines, you get 50% off for the serverless compute jobs and pipelines and 30% off for the serverless notebooks. So hey, serverless is nice obviously because it, it scales for what I need. I get very seamless version upgrades and things like that. On miscellaneous, so the 5.4 small language model is now available. So this is out of Microsoft Research. It's a 14 billion parameter model. It doesn't sound that small, but it's small compared to the number of parameters we see with obviously the large language models. And it's very good at complex reasoning, including math tasks, but also language processing. It's better actually today than the large language models for the complex math tasks. It's done very well against the math competition problem types things. And it's really been able to achieve this through tweaks and advanced changes to the process they use for the training. They're using thin synthetic data sets of very high quality. They're curating the data that's been fed in. There's tuning, there's post-training, but it's made it very good now in this very small language model. And I can use it today in the Azure AI Foundry and it will expand its availability to things like Hugging Face, I, I think maybe next week. Uh, New Zealand North, uh, the new region has gone GA. It's the first one in New Zealand. Obviously, it has availability zone support. And then there are some changes to Azure automation accounts and concurrent jobs. And this is really about, I think, making it fairer. So what's happening is, if I was a enterprise or CSP subscription before, I could have an unlimited number of these automation accounts. Now I can have 10. I can have two if I'm pay, go, MSDN or sponsored, or one if it's free or as a student. For the concurrent jobs, it used to be 200 concurrent, or I think 10 if it was free or student. Now it's 50 concurrent jobs for the enterprise CSP. It's 10 for everything else, except for free and student, which is now five. So just kind of smoothing that out a little bit. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope that's useful. Until next video, take care.